Western society has hacked our desire systems and turned us from individuals into consumers. The result is a generation just keeping our heads above water, trying to find a place in this world. Yet, we crave a life of freedom, but we find ourselves trapped by mortgages, car repayments, debt, and endless liabilities. While some of the stuff I might cover in this video, it might seem a little bit challenging, um, I do believe it's life-changing. And definitely it's pushing me to the limits of my own intellectual capacity. But honestly, when I discovered this, it absolutely blew my mind. And I really think it will blow yours too. I truly believe that if you're able to take what's in this video, understand it and apply it into your life, well, this truly would put you into the top 1% and put you at the very forefront of consciousness development. If you can consume this content and actually put it into your life, you will be unstoppable. Now, we are gonna be including things like motivation theory, evolutionary psychology, Carl Jung, Einstein, global economics, and even psychedelics. Right, so to start, let's look at something called ego. So Eric Weinstein coined the phrase ego, which stands for embedded gross obligation. And what this means is that the market has an inherent obligation to continue growing. So stocks need to increase in valuation, the market needs to trend upwards, and essentially the economy and the companies that make up the economy, they need to continue to increase in value and profits. And in order to do that, we, the people, need to keep spending. But as Einstein said, compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. And so let's say the market has an inherent obligation to keep growing at say 10% each year. This simply cannot continue indefinitely. There is only so much land, space, time, energy, and value that can actually be created. And this is where we need to turn to the psychedelic space. Terence McKenna said that for economic growth to continue at the rate that it has been, value will need to be created in code, so not in the physical reality. So to use a quick example, let's look at a watch, right? So you would probably wear a 50K Rolex on your wrist walking around the street, right? But you wouldn't wear a $2 million watch on your wrist because you would probably get your hand chopped off. You know, people will always want a way to signal their status. So for example, once smart glasses really take off and you can see digitally through the glasses that someone has a $10 million watch on, even though it's in code, right? You can't touch it or see it. You can only see it through the glasses. It has no physical value, but the value is tied in signaling to other people their status in society. Or we can look at, say, land value. Over time, too much physical land will go into the hands of a small number of people. So in order to add value, land will need to be created technologically. Now, we've already seen this with things like NFTs and the selling of digital real estate, which is essentially just service space. So what you'll be able to do eventually is put on a headset and you can explore your digital mansion. Yeah. And you'll own that space but the space is not real physical space it's coded space that you're experiencing with your subjectivity but to truly understand this point we now need to turn to motivation theory motivation is essentially what we want to do why we want to do it and how we do it recently jordan peterson and richard dawkins had a discussion and they discussed something called the baldwin effect the baldwin effect is an evolutionary theory that explains how learned behaviors can be passed down to future generations, perhaps through your genes or perhaps through the deep collective unconscious. I think the uh, jury's still out on that one. So let's say, for example, how a predator instinctively knows how to hunt its prey. That is a behavior that lies dormant in the animal's genes and manifests itself as action. Now, what is the process by which certain motivations propagate over time? I.e., what is the selective mechanism that determine which traits are and are not passed down to future generations? The answer is sexual selection. And what I mean by this is if a certain male performs a specific action or has specific traits and that action is desirable to females and the females select their sexual mates based specifically on those traits, then those traits will somehow become intertwined with the genetics of the male. And then this action or trait or set of actions and traits 
is likely to be passed down via their genes to future generations. Now, at this point, you might be thinking like, what the hell has any of this got to do with Western consumerism? Well, let me tell you right now. In the West, it is very well known that women mate across and up hierarchies and men mate across and down hierarchies. But what is that hierarchy? Typically, we see that that hierarchy is economic. How much does someone earn? What job do they do? How much do they own? So the very rungs of the ladder that men try to climb and women choose to mate from is primarily an economic one. And as a result of that, the drive or motivation to accumulate more money and more stuff in an attempt to get a mate could fuse itself into our genes and pass down to future generations. There was once an animal called the Irish elk and the Irish elk was sexually selected into extinction. So basically the female Irish elks, they sexually selected based on the size of the male's antlers. And eventually the antlers just got so big that the males couldn't lift their heads off the floor anymore. So sexual selection, it made a mistake. It focused on localized gains, i.e. how big the antlers are. But from a larger, broader perspective, the selective mechanism was faulty. And that led to that specific genome dying out. So let me ask you this. In the West, right now, are we being sexually selected into extinction? Are we so trapped in an endless cycle of consumerism, we are depleting the world's resources, the very thing that we need to sustain our being in an attempt to signal our elevated status in society? Are women choosing men primarily based on their ability to provide, how many bedrooms their house has, or how new their car is, or even how expensive their watch is? As a result of this, are men searching for meaning through localized material gains, only to find the endless consumption and material accumulation empty and devoid of real meaning. So what the hell do we do with all of this? Well, here are three ways that you can take this knowledge and incorporate it into your life right now. Step three is you can recognize these truths and use them to your advantage. Reality creates us, but in turn, we create reality. And if we are conscious of how our drives and motivations might impact future generations and the part we play in the development and the slipstream of consciousness, then we can choose our motivations and focus on things that are better for the future generations. Focusing on things like freedom, travel, reducing our footprint on the planet and promoting honesty and truth. Step two, you can make a clear distinction between what sets you free and what traps you. With each purchase that you make, does it make you a servant to the system or does it make the system serve you? What are your motivations for buying that new pair of trainers, that new t-shirt, getting that car on PCP or higher purchase? And does this purchase decision, does it set you free or does it keep you on the hamster wheel of endless consumerist consumption? And step one, travel. I know this might sound like a little bit of a strange one, right? But traveling is perhaps the purest and best expression of freedom. And stepping outside of Western society in particular just drops that baggage of societal expectations and monetary-based mating selections. When I'm traveling, I really try to immerse myself in different cultures. And different cultures, they have different inherent motivations and things that they value. When you can spend your weeks or months even spending time in different places that have different cultures, you'll begin to see your sort of cultural indoctrination and cultural conditioning sort of wash away. As strange as it is, you start to lose who you are. And in the process of losing who you are, you can discover who you can be. Now, if you've made it this far, you know, you're really one of my people. You know, you've got a tension span to sit through a somewhat complex video like this, and you're actually committed to improving your life. But if you haven't quite crack the code of making money online yet and launching your own online business and you know just so you can leave the west and choose where you spend your days and yeah you travel the world then you can schedule a quick call with me or my team um, and we'll sort of try to help you figure out a plan on how you can do that so there is going to be a link below this video it'll be in either the pinned comment or the description or you can just scan the qr code that's on the screen right now and you can schedule your call so it's totally up to you if you'd like to speak to me or one of my team for an hour and just see if we can help you figure out how you can create your own online income so you can be the one traveling the world but it's totally up to you the offer's there and if you do want to take me up on it as i said just click the link below this video and schedule your call 
cool. I do just want to say as well, if you did like this video, why don't you watch the next video that's recommended on the screen right now? Because we touched on some things similar to this and I hope you get a ton of value out of that as well. But thank you so much for watching and stay real.